My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hello again, everyone. This is the fifth episode of Paddle Tales. It's a series that goes to some of the most amazing places in the world and goes on cool paddling adventures along the way. Now, in this episode, we're gonna go to a chain of islands that I've wanted to go to forever. But first, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and you'll get notified when the next Paddle Tales episode goes live. Now, when planning things out for this Paddle Tales series, there were lots of places that I was excited to visit, but there wasn't anywhere I wanted to check out more than a small group of islands that sit like lone ducks in the middle of the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. It's a place with endless sand beaches, spectacular sea caves, and a charming small town vibe. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring the Ile de la Madeleine. Quebec's Ile de la Madeleine, also known as the Magdalen Islands, are a chain of seven islands found almost smack dab in the middle of the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. Sculpted by the wind and the sea, the islands really are spectacular, with 200 miles of pristine beaches, green rolling hills, and dramatic cliffs along a lot of the coastline. It's the kind of place where there's an obvious balance between nature and the population, which is only 15,000 for the whole region. I'm heading to Edospa, a really cool outdoor shop and outfitter that offers kiteboarding, stand-up paddling, and sea kayaking trips. Here, I'm meeting up with Eliane Arsenault, who works in the shop and leads paddling trips. Aerospa has been here for 20 years. Our main activity is kite surfing. We have a, a private uh, spot to uh, learn, so nobody to disturb us. It's really an amazing place to learn. And we also do uh, kayak tours. And we also have a shop where we can sell uh, kayaks, sub, gear, wetsuit. To get things started, we're hitting the water only a few minutes from the shop in one of the sheltered bays that can accommodate paddlers of any level. And so I quickly unpack and assemble my track hack that I flew here with. Cool, Italy Malin, ready to go. I'll be honest, I get the distinct impression that we're heading into the bay so that Ellie can feel my skills out before heading into more exposed water. Now don't get me wrong, I get it. I would probably do the same thing if some middle-aged dude complaining about a sore back arrived and asked me to take him paddle. That being said, I quickly realize that the bay is a beautiful first taste of the Magdalen Coast on its own. So Ellie, you, you're from this area. Yeah, from this, here. This is your backyard. Yes. That's a cool backyard. It is. How long have you been sea kayaking here? It's my first summer guiding in sea kayaking. Yeah. But since I'm young, I've been doing it. You've been uh, on the water. Yeah. So when you're paddling around Les Îles, what do you expect to see or hope to see? Uh, Sometimes we can see seals, and if we we can go also uh, follow the the cliffs and go in some caves and tunnels, that's really nice to explore. A lot of people come to see the beautiful red uh, rock walls here. Tell me a bit about you know about the, these walls. So the the red uh, walls, the cliffs. Uh, what makes them red is the 1% of uh, iron oxide that are in them and then the 99% is uh, some sand. 90% sand. Yeah, exactly. 
And uh, we have a big problem here on the island is the erosion. Yeah. So when we get big storm, there's just pieces of the cliff dropping in the water. Yep. And the iron oxide become a uh, black sand and you can uh, catch it with a magnet. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really nice. That's cool. Got some seals up here. How are they going to let us get close, or are they kind of skittish? They're probably going to go away. They feel more comfortable in the water. Yeah. That's why. Oh, yeah. There they go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them go. <laughs> Not the most graceful creature. No, on on land. land. Yeah, but in the water, different. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> Having earned Ellie's confidence in my paddling skills, we make the move to the outer exposed coast of the island, to a place named La Belance, which is known for having the region's most dramatic coastline, including some incredible sea caves to explore. So what side of the island are we on right now? North. Or on the north side yeah, of the island? Yeah, north side. So does this typically get less waves and wind or more? More. It gets more. Yeah. Okay. So we're lucky to be here today on calm waters. Today we did uh, explore the, the the caves in the in the cliffs. The caves are changing every year so it's really fun to go and uh, explore new new places, new caves, new tunnels. Is this whole short coastline dotted with these caves, covered with these caves? Yeah, there's a lot along the way, but the cathedral is the only one. The cathedral is the is one of the most impressive? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is impressive, that's for sure. Of course, I'd looked at photos and video of the area before coming here, but as always seems to be the case, it can't prepare you for what it's like in person. Now I've had the great fortune to paddle in stunning places around the world, but this coastline is unlike anything I've ever experienced, and hands down, one of the coolest places I've ever explored. Tell you what, Ellie, this has been incredible. Thank you for the tour. You're very welcome, it was a pleasure. I'm kind of hoping we can continue the tour, but maybe touring a microbrewery or something That's in town. a really good idea. <laughs> One of the greatest things about my Paddle Tales tour around Quebec this year is how many microbreweries there are in this province. And they're all good. And so before doing some off-water exploring around the Magdalen Islands, it only seemed right to make a quick beer stop at L'Abri de la Tempête, which translates to shelter from the storm. Although I could have easily spent a lot more time here doing valuable research about Magdalen Island beer, there's a lot more to check out in the area. Like the bakeries. Quebec has awesome bakeries everywhere, and this place is no different. Personally, I consider a key scoring metric for a destination to be the quality of the bakeries, and more specifically, the quality of the cinnamon bun. What makes a good cinnamon bun? To put it simply, you should feel like you need to shower after eating one. Look at that. You cannot travel in Quebec without hitting the bakeries. 
The other thing Quebec people are really proud of is their cheese, and for good reason. For example, here at the Au Pied du Vent Dairy, the supply chain is really as simple and natural as it gets. Those cows look like they need some serious milking relief. As I understand it, the cows are around us. They say, this is the farm right behind yep. here. Their milk there, the milk comes down that pipe right into this building and you guys make cheese. This is what we got. Exactly, we've got it day after day. We produce cheese uh, all year long. And we, so we produce the milk and we also produce the cheese. As fresh as fresh gets. <laughs> Almost like a spreadable cheese really keeps its milk taste. Mm. Quite mild. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we've had beer, cinnamon buns, and cheese. Why not? Let's put the guts to the ultimate test, topping it all off with some fresh smoked fish. So those are the some of the products we have uh, back, uh, back here at the smokehouse. The main products we, we taste during the, the tour is the marinated airing and the dry airing. So those are the same airing that was smoked for three months, but we have one that's just crumble in some pieces and the other one put in a marinade. So can I try one of You these? can go, you can go. That's, that's the reason I put them yeah, there. Oh, okay. I was just gonna use my fingers, but. Yeah, we got toothpick, so. <laughs> a little more civilized? Yeah, just a bit. Out camera, we do that by hand and we mm. just face face on. But uh, when you, when you, we're people, we, we we use two things. That's awesome. Yeah. Two to three months of smoke. Two to three months, yeah. Well, it's been an amazing tour around the island, and I absolutely love the small town feel and the island way of life. People work hard here, and they're doing really cool things. But at the same time. There's a relaxed vibe and an obvious separation from the rat race of city life. With the new day, I make the trip to the far end of the Magdalen Islands, to an inn called La Salicorne. This part of the archipelago gets much less traffic than the main island, and definitely has a more remote feel to it. First on my hit list is to check out Old Harry Beach. Although the Magdalen Islands has around 200 miles of gorgeous beach, Old Harry is considered one of the best surf beaches in the region. I'm meeting up with Annabelle and Michael, two guides from La Salicorn, who might actually love playing in the water more than I do. This morning we went at Old Dairy Beach and it's uh, the most wonderful beach on uh, these islands. Um, we went to seek some waves to surf in a kayak, but it wasn't really the best uh, conditions we've ever had. Uh, we managed to do some anyways. It was really, really a ton of fun with uh, Ken and uh, Annabelle. Old Dairy Beach is one of my uh, favorite spots in the world and definitely my best surfing spot here on the islands. It's uh, facing the southeast, so the swell is coming from the waves, the wind and everything. Everything is coming from uh, Nova Scotia. When it's southwest, you get those choppy waves, but then at Old Airy Beach, you always have those big, 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 clean waves and so easy to surf. Since the surf isn't really happening today, Michael and Annabelle decide they need to show me something different. And so they give me the thickest wetsuit I've ever put on and tell me we're going for a swim. I'm surprised to find out that swimming along the coast here is one of the most popular adventure tourism activities to do. Now I'll be honest, the whole idea of leaving my kayak behind in order to go swimming isn't something I would normally do, but that's exactly what made it so fun. These guys, like a couple of seals on the rocks, I feel like a manatee, a big sea cow. What I like uh, the most about my job 
is uh, to get the people to maybe uh, uh, come face to face with their fears. Yeah, fears challenge of, themselves. Yeah, challenge themselves. I don't think I'm going to be trying that. It looks like the rocks burst them. Pretty proud of all the groups we have, and we have a really nice moment each time we go out in the caves. That's right. Making our way through the rough water is slow work, but surprisingly easy to do with all the flotation that the wetsuit and life jacket provides. As we come around the next cliff, some deeper, darker caves appear before us. And once again, I'm following despite my better judgment. Man, I am not usually one for swimming. I like being in my kayak and not out of my kayak. But this is one of the coolest experiences I've had in a long time. What an unbelievable place. Okay, so we're here. Where are we? We're at the Grand Entrée, and uh, we're here today to uh, dig and find soft shell. Clams? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sweet. So how does this work? Well, uh, first of all, you have to spot little holes on the sand. Okay. This is the, the breathing spot for the, the clam. And maybe just use two fingers to dig around. Okay. And then you slowly can put it up. Okay. I think this is going to be a sleeve roller upper. But this one is too small. Because it, it needs to be as large as three fingers. So we put it back and we find another one. Three fingers. Okay. It's a junior. <laughs> so is this like a popular thing to do here? Yeah, it's kind of popular and um, you know, you can do it with your children. Yeah. They're pretty happy to play in the sand. So I'll show you how to eat them because we don't eat the whole clam. So okay. You open it and gently you remove the brown sheet. Right? Ah. You don't eat this part and you can rinse it and you're ready to go. <laughs> nice, down the hatch. All right, so remove that <laughs> brown sheath. Yeah. And rinse it. Good, good rinse. I heard yours crunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> That's good. Really good. Yes. Not much sand. No. Not at all. <laughs> Part of the experience. Yeah. That's well, that was a great day. Thank you very <laughs> much. That was a great way to almost end, but I, you know what goes really well with clams? Mm. Beer. Ah. All right. I think we probably. It's yeah. a good idea. Get the microbrew on our way at yeah. here. Les Îles de la Madeleine is a place that I've wanted to visit for a long time. And so my expectations were very high. To say that my expectations were simply met would be a huge understatement. Everything about the experience was incredible. And I can't wait to come back and share the experience with my family. Well, that does it for this episode of Paddle Tales. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below, and stick around for a sneak peek at next week's Paddle Tales adventure. Next time on Paddle Tales, I'm heading to one of the most beautiful and unique cities in North America, Quebec City. A living museum of cobblestone roads and historical buildings, the city provides a taste of old Europe with a lively French-Canadian flair. Only 30 minutes out of town, 
you'll discover the magical Jacatje National Park with its Jurassic-like river valley that is best experienced by boat and paddle. The Quebec City area is packed with history and adventure, and you won't want to miss it.